Hello and welcome to Diabetes Connections in the News. I'm Stacey Sims, and these are the top diabetes stories and headlines of the past seven days. As always, I'm going to link up my sources in the Facebook comments where we are live and in the show notes at diabetes-connections.com when this airs as a podcast so you can read more whenever you want on your own schedule. In the News is brought to you by Real Good Foods. Find their entree bowls and all of their great products in your local grocery store, Target, or Costco. Our top story this week, what did COVID lockdown mean for blood sugar trends? A new study says when they had to stay at home, people with type 1 significantly improved while the opposite happened for those with type 2. Now, you should know these studies all come from European countries with pretty strict lockdowns, and they're an aggregate, a look at a bunch of previously conducted studies. With type 1, time and range improved significantly in 83% of the studies looked at here. With type 2, almost half of the studies showed a clear decrease in blood sugar control with higher A1Cs. So what happened? There's a lot of speculation. These researchers suggest less exercise and more snacking and more stress is to blame for the type 2 numbers. Although, in my opinion, the same could be said for all people with diabetes. They also suppose that the lockdowns gave parents more time to look after kids with type 1 and gave young adults a more predictable routine. Now, personally, I hope another study is done on this in the U.S. where, frankly, access to insulin and healthcare providers may have become more of an issue during the pandemic. A bit of an update from Prevention Bio. They are moving forward to answer the FDA's questions and hopefully resubmit. This is for teplizumab, the first drug shown to prevent type 1 diabetes for so far up to three years, although the FDA turned it down in July. Prevention says they continue to collect data. They're moving to set up what's called a formal type A meeting to submit that new information. The company's CEO says they believe they're making significant progress to address the observations cited by the FDA and continue to work with urgency. A bunch of schlockmeisters got called out last week by the U.S. FDA and FTC, that's the Federal Trade Commission. Ten companies got warning letters alleging they were selling illegal dietary supplements to cure or prevent diabetes. Regulators wrote the products cited in the warning letters are considered unapproved new drugs. They include things like turmeric, bitter melon, ginkgo biloba, and more. The report cites the increase in cost of insulin and other diabetes medications as a reason why people are turning to alternatives, even if they aren't proven. Please be careful out there. Quick additional FTC note, they held a virtual open meeting today. Two people from the diabetes community spoke about rising insulin prices. If you'd like to learn more, I will link up that information. We don't talk a lot about shots, about multiple daily injections, but here's some good news about the basics. A new study shows rotating sites and using smaller needles really do help. You've likely heard of lipohypertrophy. That's when lumps of fat or scar tissue form under your skin. These Belgian researchers did a six-month study where they provided smaller pen needles and did a lot of education, including an online platform where they taught proper injection techniques, including not reusing needles. They reduced what they called unexplained high blood glucose significantly and glucose variability decreased as well. A1Cs stayed about the same. No surprise, but still disappointing. Insurance is what's dictating whether young children are more likely to use a CGM regularly. This was published in Diabetes Technology and Therapeutics. Those on public or government insurance often face more obstacles. This was a study of kids ages one to six years, very young, within two months of their diagnosis. 82% used a CGM at least once during the study period. But then they divided everybody into four groups, always used CGMs, stable use, inconsistent use, or never used. Families with private insurance were more likely to be in the always group or the stable group than those with public insurance. And the always group had an A1C that was 1.3% lower than the never group. More to come, including a Dexcom G5 update. But first, I want to tell you about one of our great sponsors who helped makes Diabetes Connections possible. They're Real Good Foods, where the mission is be real good. They make nutritious foods grain-free, high in protein, never added sugar, and from real ingredients. The new entree bowls are great. They have a chicken burrito, a cauliflower mash, and braised beef bowl. The lemon chicken I've told you about and more. They keep adding to the menu line. You can buy online or find a store near you with their locator right on the website. I'll put a link in the Facebook comments and as always at diabetes-connections.com. Back to the news now and heads up if you are still somehow 
using the Dexcom G5. More than a year ago, Dexcom stopped selling the G5 and G4, but, and thanks to the listeners who brought this to my attention, the G5 app is now sending out a notification on October 4th. The Dexcom G5 app will no longer be available, as they have shared with us on the podcast many times. They've been transitioning everybody over to the G6 and will soon move on to the G7. No timeline for that. I know you're going to ask. But as far as we know, it has not been submitted to the FDA. And Dexcom has said it will go for European approval for the G7 first. Don't forget to send me your dear Dr. Banting audio. What would you say to the man credited with the discovery of insulin? I'm doing a project on this, but I need your help. All the details on how to send it to me is in the show notes. It's really very easy. And I really appreciate those who've already sent it in. Thank you so much. And please join me wherever you get your podcasts for our next episode. The one out right now is all about the new Walmart insulin. Will it save you money? And that is it for In the News this week. If you like it, please share it. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you back here soon. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.